This conference will now be recorded. Thank you. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Yes. Go to that land where I'm bound. Where I'm bound. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Peace, happiness is in that land. Peace and happiness is in that land. Peace and happiness is in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Peace and happiness is in that land. Peace and happiness is in that land. Peace and happiness is in that land where I'm bound. Nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy is in that land. Nothing but joy in that land where I'm bound. Where I'm bound. Nothing but joy is in that land. Nothing but joy is in that land. Nothing but joy. In that land where I'm, don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound? Where I'm bound? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go? To that land where I'm bound. Our Father and our God, we come to say thank you. We come to say thank you once again for your loving kindness. And we thank you for your tender mercy. We thank you for your being God, a God who's still on the throne. A God who sits high but yet looks down low. A God who loves and ever loves and cares for his own. Oh God, we magnify you today. We glorify you. We lift you up. We call on that great name because at that name of Jesus, every knee has to bow and every tongue must confess that you are Lord. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, for giving us this day our daily bread. Oh God, thank you. Oh God, that you never left us nor forsook us. Oh God, and we say thank you. Oh God, you look beyond our faults and see our very need. Oh God, we say thank you. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do we put our trust. Oh God, let us not be ashamed. Let not our enemy triumph over us, oh God magnify you today oh god we thank you for another week oh god thank you for your keeping power thank you that our chain have not been broken tonight oh god we thank you oh god so many things are going oh god in the world and so many folks are falling by the wayside but lord help us to stand in times like these oh god we look to be the author and the finish of our faith oh god help us tonight open up our understanding tonight allow your holy ghost to Fall fresh and fall free, oh God. New mercies, oh God, we seek thy faith tonight. Oh God, in Jesus' name, we pray. Use us once again for your glory. Oh God, speak to us and speak through us that your people will be, oh God, lifted and your people will be fed the word of God. We thank you now. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the first prayer. We thank you for the first song. We thank you for the testimonies of the saints tonight. Oh, God bless us, and we shall be blessed. Keep us, and we shall be kept. Hold us, and we shall be held. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. I know the Lord will take care of me. I know the Lord will provide for me. I know the Lord will lead me and guide me along the way. Are you glad tonight that you know God? Amen. It's true to his word that he said. He gave us his promise, and lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. And we say thank God, for he's a God who keeps his promise. Well, oh God, he said he will never leave us nor forsake us, and we thank you tonight. God bless you tonight on this night of, uh, of study, this night of prayer. Amen. We thank God for our uh, devotional leader. Amen. Our chairman, Deacon Frank Bryant, and all the deacons tonight, Deacon Ministries. Each and every one who is joining in, we recognize all our clergy, our Minister Graham, our Minister Hayes, Amen, Evangelist Cooper, and all clergy that may be joining in with us tonight. We're so grateful for you. To all our 
disciples of, Jesus, of the Lord Jesus Christ who worship at Greater Central, and to all the disciples of the Lord, amen, who think of not robbery to join in with us. We thank God for some of the numbers. We did 56 last week, amen. amen. Join in with us on our Tuesday night prayer and Bible study. We thank God that the line should be running over, amen. I'd also say the chairman should not have to beg you or ask you to give your testimony if the Lord is good. Amen. If you don't say nothing else, amen, you don't have to give a long testimony. Just get on the line and say the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures forever. Why should I say that? Because they said, let the redeemed of the Lord, amen, say so. If nobody else prays the Lord, you ought to you ought to have a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. If you woke you up this morning, amen, you got a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. I'm grateful for another night. As we're looking forward to the, uh, the close of another year. Amen. We're so close, but yet so far. Amen. Amen. We don't know whose name is next on the list. God will call out a time into eternity, but we thank God for tonight. We can be one more in the number. Uh, before we go any further, we're gonna we have a prayer request. Our brother Tony Phillips. Uh, I spoke with him on yesterday. He requested the prayer of the saints, the prayers of the saints, the church, amen, to come together and lift his name up on tomorrow. Lord's willing, he will go undergo a uh, surgical procedure, amen, on his neck. Believe that would help his spinal condition. So let's pray fervently for him in our prayer, Brother Tony Phillips, uh, that the doctor's hands would be guided in that delicate area, working on his nerves, amen, from his neck, and that corrective surgery can be done, that it would be beneficial to him. Amen. He asked for the prayers of the righteous. And so we'll close out tonight, we're going to pray, amen. If anyone's sick among you, let them call for the elders and let them pray the prayer of faith. Amen. Even on tomorrow, when you go on down on your knees in the morning, just call Brother Philip's name. And there's others that's going through, and we want to keep all our people in prayer, even those that's in nursing home facilities. These are not easy times now, but we still continue to hold them up. Amen. With the blood of Jesus. Tonight, we're so happy to this be in the number we're going to have we have a, a couple of more uh, uh, bible studies that we'll do for the year before we close out for the holiday season amen we look at the week of christmas we're just we're not stopping prayer amen so i believe uh tonight uh, the week of christmas and the week of the uh, new year's that we'll just have prayer during those times then in the new year, we'll continue and pick up, amen, uh, with our Bible study. And so uh, I know the week Friday would be the 25th, so I think that would be somewhere around the uh, 22nd and uh, 29th, amen. I believe that those are the dates that we'll just have to continue. We'll just stay in prayer during those, uh, during those times. And then in the new year, we'll pick up and we'll continue with our prayer and Bible study, but we'll never cease from praying. Amen. God bless you. And so tonight, we're in the book tonight, so we pray that you have your study materials with you, that you have your Bible. Amen. That's, that's the book that we study from our Bible. Amen. You got your Bible, you got your main source, and then we thank God uh, for our study material, our commentary book, Be Worshipful. And I pray that this, uh, the study of uh, these Psalms have been a blessing each and every one so far amen grateful to god we thank you for each and everyone joining in tonight tonight we want to look at uh psalms 31 the 31st psalm a psalm that has been written by david what i'll do i'm going to read the psalm in the king james version in its entirety then we'll come back with a few introductory uh comments concerning the 31st psalm then we will look into our study guide as we go through. Let us look in the word of God, Psalms 31, beginning at verse number one. It's a little lengthy. I believe we have 24 verses here, so we're going to uh, read entirety. 
Psalm 31, beginning at verse number one. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net of that they have laid cleverly for me. For thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Let me read that again. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversity, and hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eyes is consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my, of my iniquity and my bones are consumed. I was a reproach among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors and a fear unto my acquaintances. They that did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mine. I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from them that persecute me. Make, my, make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for, for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence. Let the lying lips be put to to silence, would speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast brought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strath from the strife of tongue. Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I, have, for I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee. O love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentiful rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you. Uh, for a few moments, I want to look at our introductory uh, verses here, uh, talking about this 70, 31st Psalm and looking at the writer of this Psalm once again, the writer of this Psalm. Uh, 31st Psalm was written by David. Uh, he ascribed it to the chief musician. He addressed it to the chief musician. And so a lot of times, some of his, we know that a lot of David's experiences, uh, a lot of the Psalms was written out of his own personal experiences. And some may say, well, David, you're in trouble again. Well, David had to deal with various things in his lifetime. David lived to be about 70 years old. Somewhere around the age of 17, 18, he was called out of his from his father's Jesse house as a shepherd boy. 
amen, he was called to go to uh, play the harp, uh, be a person of soothing comfort when he played the harp to the king Saul. And so uh, from the time about age 8, 30, 33 in that bracket, he became king. So for a number of years, from 17, uh, he encountered many things. He encountered Goliath. He, he encountered being pursued by Saul. He had many wars he had to deal with. Uh, he had to deal with his own troubles. He had, he had to deal with his own backsliding ways. He had to deal with uh, his own family problems. A lot of things that David had to deal with. He had to deal with his son, Absalom, rebelling, trying to take the, the kingdom by force, almost. Under, you know, as they say, they cut you under your feet. The undercurrent. Uh, you also, uh, I want for y'all to read First Kings, the first chapter of First Kings. That Absalom had another brother named Identity John, and when David, the Bible said he had grown old. And I mean, he was about David lived to be about 70, 71. But in his final days, Absalom brother, uh, because David had not set things officially in order, and man, he may have spoke about Solomon being coming the king, but he never officially set it in order, and he was grown so old and weary that uh, uh, Absalom brother, Adonijah, amen, assumed that he was going to be king, and he began the process of making himself a self-appointed or self-proclaimed king, but when you read First Kings, you'll see how quickly uh, David had to set things in order and set Solomon in place, so people are always trying to seek position, trying to undercut, amen, you know, I say that if you have to uh, wheel and deal to get a position, if you have to uh, brown those people to get a position, uh, if you have to undermine people to get a position, guess what? You want if you if you're fortunate to get the position, some of the same things that you had to do to get that position, guess what? You're going to have to continue to do it to keep that position. But I tell you, if God haven't placed you, especially in a spiritual setting, if God haven't placed you in a position, if you place yourself, uh, it may last for a while, but it won't last for long. Amen. If God have anointed you, if God have appointed you, if God have positioned you to a place of leadership, a place of where he appoints you to serve his people, amen, we have to always consider this. Some people get positioned, they think it's all about it. No, it's not about you. You have to know it's God and his people. You've just been called for a season. I often return, I really reiterate that to our officers. They know they're on the line. They know from the past on down, we only here for, for a, a reason and a season. And one by one, that our time will be up and God always got already got a replacement system. Can I get a witness? Can I get an amen to that? Some of you on the line tonight have been called to replace some great people that have gone on before you. And you we only in this, and I got enough sense to know, even as pastor, I'm only here for, for a little while. And, and only what I do for Christ will last and be counted in the end. But if God calls you, if God sanctions you, I don't care if who goes against you, if God puts you there. If the Lord, if when the Lord is with you, that he'll sustain you. He did not say it was going to be easy. It said what Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Never, nowhere did you read that didn't say that the gates of hell wouldn't rise up against you, but they shall, it will not prevail against you. So, amen. We're not storm proof. Amen. We have to weather the storm as well. Amen. We're not exempt from trials. We're not exempt from trouble. We're not exempt from tribulations. We're not exempt from, from suffering. Amen. But the Lord is with you. That's the key thing. You often hear me say this on several occasions on different Bible studies. The key thing about David, I'll continue to say it over and over again. The Lord was with them. People recognize that the Lord was with David. And even with the Lord being with David, he still went through some things. And so even in tonight's lesson, again, 
you going, you still crying, David? You still crying out? Well, who else is he going to cry out to? I believe the psalmist said in uh, 118, it's better to put your trust in the Lord than to have confidence in man. Can I get a witness to that? Some of, so, some of life's circumstances, your only hope, your only trust is the Lord. I mean, we have our closest people we have is our, our, our parents. Amen. We come out of their loins, father and mother. And then if you're blessed to have a, a spouse, as much as we love them, we have children and we have extended family, church family members. But ultimately, our hope and our trust is in the Lord. The theme would be uh, in times of dis distress and stress, depending upon God's requires complete commitment. Amen. When you look at this theme or this psalm, we talk about being co completely committed to the Lord when you're going through your times of stress. Completely committed to the Lord when mm, trouble is on every side. Uh, I think about the, the song our choir was saying when we say all in his hand. I put it all in his hand. No matter the problem, no matter the burden, the problem. If I have a question, I put it all in his hand. I put it all in his What What did you put in his hand, Brother Preacher? I put the this and the that all in his hands. Amen. So when you look at this psalm, David is going through again. This is a psalm of trust. It's also a psalm of lament. That means he's going, he's mourning, he, he's, he's grieving. It's a prayer of David in a time of great need. A prayer from one who has been despised. He has been de defamed and been persecuted. David ex exhorts the afflicted to love the Lord and to be strong because uh, the Lord will protect them from men, evil plans. That's what was going on in David's life at this time. Uh, his foes in this scenario was plotting against them. And I always say there's a difference between your enemies and your foes. Your enemies, those opposing you, you can point your enemies out. Uh, but your foes are those whom you sat at the table with, those who ate your bread and drank from your cup. Uh, your foes are familiar faces. These are the foes. You know, I often say when uh, uh, it's not so much the blow that uh, hurts you or kills you when you're attacked by a foe. It's the one who administered the blow. That's what hurts you even more. Is that right? Okay. Uh, this psalm is a great psalm for leaders. That's what I determined about this. And people of God, this psalm is a great psalm for uh, the leaders and the people of God to study and to meditate on while trying to lead people. And why are you trying to lead people, but yet enduring a personal attack at the same time? You're trying to lead people, but you have your own problem. You're dealing with your own pers uh, personal attack from Satan. And I say Satan because he'll, he'll send that spirit upon anybody close to you to cause harm or hurt or to hinder you. And so yeah, you're trying to lead people, but yet at the same time, you're dealing with personal attack by familiar faces. When you study this Psalm 31, uh, these types of painful, stressful, and dreadful experience are not printed. Eh? I have another thing I want to let you know about that. Uh, as a leader, when you study this song, and you wonder, I said, well, you have to go through all these things and you running for these positions of leadership. Well, I want to let you know, when you go through these stressful experiences, but yet you want to assume leadership positions, there are many things that go with the territory, but it's not in the job description. Because if you knew it in advance, you wouldn't take the job. Mm -hmm. If you knew in advance that people would lie on you, scandalize your name, 
and call you everything but what you're trying to be, which is a child of God. If you knew that in advance, if it was printed in the job description, uh, title president. If it was in the printed in the job description, matter of fact, I, I still have my letter when Greater Central called me. Well, God appointed me, but when Greater Central called me to become the pastor, there was many things in the job description, but there were many things that came with the territory that wasn't even in the job description. But I'm still here. All I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you, if you can take it, whatever comes with the territory, you can make it. And everything is done to help to develop you. See, a lot of times people want to be strong. Lord, make me strong. Make I want to be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Well, you got to go through something. Even if you want to develop physical muscles, amen, you got to go to the gym and work out. Is that right? And the weight trainer going to give you, amen, some muscles amen so some they're going to build your muscle they're going to put some weight on it that you can be able to lift amen and so as you go week after week they're going to add some more weight to it so what we're saying uh if you can deal with lies it, that makes you strong if, if you get to a point that it don't bother you hallelujah then you know you're grown if you can deal with being talked about hearing your name whether it's in the low tone as a murmur and keep going, then you know you're growing. Amen. If you can deal with scandalous rumors and lies, and you hear it, some you know about, some that you don't know about, and still show up on Sunday morning with a smile on your face and get in the quiet stand and sing Amazing Grace, you can tell that you're growing. If you can deal with all these things and still put your uniform and stand at the door and be a doorkeeper, uh, you know that you're growing. Uh, if you can deal with all the undercurrents and still get on your knees as a deacon and pray the prayer of faith, then you know that you're grown. Jesus had to go through it. David had to go through it. Moses had to deal with it. What about you and I? Okay. And so uh, there's many things that go with the job description that's not in the territory. That's uh, it's not. It goes with the territory, but it's just not in the uh, job description. But God, but God, can I give y'all a scripture real quick? We're going to get to the lesson, but I believe somebody need to hear this. Psalms 34 and verse 19. If you have your Bibles, I just want to encourage somebody that uh, you'll get through it. I wouldn't be here tonight if I didn't stay the course. I wouldn't be called pastor tonight. If I didn't stay the course, look at Psalms 34 and verse 19. And this is a highlight verse. That means I want you to have your highlighter. Psalms 34 and verse 19. What does it say, brother preacher? It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. Yeah, we don't have to say nothing else. But the Lord, what does the Lord do? Deliver him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, long as you got a butt in there, but the Lord, amen. Can I get a witness? You not exempt. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. We can praise and shout right there. We're not exempt of the affliction that we're going to encounter. And I often say there ought to be a class that every disciple ought to take. If you're going to stay the course, and the title of that class should be being talked about 101. That should be course 101, being talked about. You'd be surprised how many people come to me and say, Pastor, they said this about me. Pastor, my name is out there. And Pastor, I don't like what's be, what I hear about me. Pastor, they on the telephone talking about me. They lying on me, Pastor. So what? It goes with the territory. Hey Amen. What do you do when you hear a rumor? I, I tell you, it pays to have a good sense of humor. They lie on me. They scan on. I, I heard some stuff over the years. I just had to laugh about it. Amen. But one thing you have to know when you know the truth, when you know the Lord, amen, uh, hold your peace. 
you can't, one thing about a lie, you can't stop a lie. A lie will always get a head start on truth. Is that right? The, the lie is like the turtle in the air between the race, between the turtle and the air. Uh, when the lie get out, you can't stop it. <laughs> you try to uh, 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 stop a lie. You, you wear yourself out. But hold your peace. Stand still. Let the Lord fight your battle. That's what this lesson is about tonight. Let the Lord fight your battle. And after a while, by and by, truth will overtake a lie. Truth will prevail. Can I get a witness? Anybody have to ever uh, stand and wait on truth to overtake a lie? Especially when you hold a position of, of honor. It goes with the territory. You want to be president? Go ahead. You want to be deacon? Go on. You want to be the pastor? Go on. You want to be the minister? Want to be the evangelist? Go on. But I tell you, you're going to have to endure some stuff. Shall I be carried to the skies on flowery bed of ease? But others have fought to win the prize and fail, sail through bloody seas. And many other affliction of the righteous. But the Lord, as long as you hear but the Lord, that means there's a shift going in another record. Uh, when storms and trouble come in your life, who do you trust? That's the question. When the storms of uh, 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 in trouble come, and they will come, uh, when the enemy has become those closest around you, we call them foes, people who eat at your table, of course. You don't know who to, in, a, in humanity, to trust. Uh, who do you confide in? I often say the Lord, as the Holy Spirit revealed to me, we, we are duty bound to love everybody. We're duty bound to speak to everybody. Let me say that again. If you call yourself a child of God and, and you deliberately walk around and uh, uh, walk around and walk by people and don't open your mouth and greet them, you need to go back. Amen. You need to go back to elementary school. You, I don't care how old you are. You're still acting like a child. You're still a baby Christian. You'd be surprised. I, I'm the pastor, overseer of many of the souls of greater central. And I'm not saying, but there are a few. I'm the pastor, and they see me standing there, and they'll walk by me. And the only thing I do is say, have mercy, Lord. They see me. There's only one pastor. There's only one under shepherd, and you the sheep. You the lamb. And but if, if, if you still have that type of spirit that you can't say good morning or God bless you or have a good day, if you still have that type of spirit that you got to walk way around the church to avoid speaking to somebody, you need to say, Lord, have mercy and work on me. You, you're still a work in progress. Amen. We're duty bound to speak to everybody. Now you just can't talk to everybody. Now that's just common sense. You can't reveal your heartfelt desires and your hurts to everybody. You thank God if you get two or three people you can confide in, you got, that's enough. Amen. We speak to everybody, but we just can't talk to everybody. Uh, when you're going through an internal personal storm or attack, you may have and know many people, but I found out when you're going through these personal attacks, uh, they're, this is when your circle becomes real small. Let me say that again. When you're going through, when you're in the storm, when folk just analyzing, it can be some financial storms you're going through, some physical storms you're going, sickness in your body. Amen. I don't care how many people you know, but when you're in it, <laughs> brothers and sisters, you can count on your hand. Amen. The amount of people that you can trust. You can count on your hand the amount of people you can depend on. You can count on your hand uh, the amount of people that you can count on. And that's how it feels. And I'm going to, uh, leaders and people of God, when you're trying to do God's will, uh, it's not if or will the enemy attack, but it's about when the enemy attack, what are you going to do? Who will you trust in? How will you respond when the enemy come your way? And he is not if and when or how or it's not about uh, will he come. He's coming. And a lot of times he comes uh, with what Matthew said, the enemy would be of your own household, right in familiar faces. Uh, 
or people that you work, work with down through the years, serve with familiar faith. Uh, when they when they uh, turn on you, how do you respond? I got a scripture for you, Romans 12. We go into the book real quick, but I want you to just leave these scriptures with you. Romans, the 12th chapter. How do we, how are we supp re supposed to respond when we are uh, uh, dealing, being attacked? Romans, the 12th chapter. I just want to look at verses 19 to 21. Romans 12, verses 19 through 21. Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 19 through verses 21. How we should respond when under attack, dealing with your enemies and your foes. Look what he says here. Uh, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Do you really believe that? Or do you have to get your little piece in there? Do you have to have your say? Or do you believe? that God said that he will fight your battles. Look at verse 20. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, he tells us how to do. You feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, for in so doing, thou hast reaped coals of fire on it. That means you've got the victory over him. Amen. And then last but not least, 21. It says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So that's the remedy of dealing with evil. Don't be overcome by it, but you overcome evil by keep doing good. Now, that's how you can determine whether you're growing in grace or not. Hallelujah. Let's look in the book. Let's look in the book. Let's get our book. And tonight we're on page uh, 117. Page 117. Uh Page 117, we're going to look at the paragraph here. The emphasis on Psalms 31, the emphasis is on trusting, taking refuge in the Lord, no matter how difficult the circumstances might be. David was surrounded by subversive, whispering campaigns and wicked conspiracies, and everything seemed against him. Even his best friends and neighbors didn't want to be seen with him. Fear was on every side. The reference to a besieged city in verse 21 has led some students to connect this vital to situation with David. Uh, David's experience at Kila, or perhaps at Ziglag. Uh, however, it's clear that what it, that what is described in the psalm best fits what happened during the rebellion led by. Epsilon. And so what happened here, brothers and sisters, what is the background of of, of uh, our our of this writing here on Psalm 31? What what's what's going on in David's life at this time? Well, there's several scenarios. Uh it doesn't say clearly what was going on. We know number one that uh David was uh dealing uh, okay, yeah. He was being pursued by Saul. So if you look at 1 Samuel, uh, the 23rd chapter of 1 Samuel, uh, verses uh, 25 through 29, uh, it would tell you that he was being pursued by Saul. Familiar, this is why he was still, he wasn't king yet. He was still the warrior, David. Uh, God's anointed. This was the time when they had the jealous, Saul had that jealous spirit. Amen. And David had 600 valiant men with him. They were in the field, in the open place, from city to city. And people, uh, even though they say they loved David, they were all they was always uh, uh, in allegiance to King Saul. So whatever David city David had came in with his men, there was always someone that would go back and tell Saul, well, you know, David is here, and if you come at a certain time, you can trap him. Amen. So David was in the mountain place when you look at here, 23rd chapter of 1 Samuel, Saul was on one side of the mountain and David was on the other side of the mountain. And David had men with him. Now, everybody, uh, they trusted, his men trusted David. But, you know, after a while, uh, a little fear 
sex uh, in, you know, you fighting against the king of Israel, which was Saul at that time. And then the scenario could have been when David and his men uh, uh, was in Ziglag. Uh, they had departed to go to fight the Philistines, I believe, and, and, and uh, the Amalekites that came to Ziglag. That's what it was. And uh, while they were away, when David and his men were away, the Amalekites came and they didn't slay the women of Israel, but they took the women of Israel, David's wives, the children, all their, the, the soldiers' wives and children, they took them captive. And when you look at that Psalm, that Psalm, uh, that, excuse me, that's First Samuel chapter 30, verses one through six, that could have been the scenario because what happened was when you, when you come back home and your women, and your wives are gone and your children are gone, these strong, valiant men that was working with David, now they begin to, amen, the Bible said they begin to uh, uh, be at wrath with David. Some of the same people that he was warring with, now they begin uh, to be sorry for. I want to just uh, highlight some of the words that, it was one word, word that they said here in, in verse 6, that David was greatly distressed for that the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people would grieve every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. That was the uh, 30th Psalm, first, first Samuel, chapter 30 and verse 6. So these are some of the scenarios that could lead, could have led to David writing the 31st Psalm. But the only thing we know that he was distressed by familiar faces, amen. And then also he was dealing with Absalom. And we know Absalom tried to take the kingdom. That was his own son, his own flesh and blood. And you know, as it said, Absalom has stole the hearts of the people. And when you're trying to take somebody out, uh, when you begin to turn the hearts of the people away from the leader, anything he says or anything the leader does, it becomes, uh, conspiracy becomes a rumor, it becomes uh, uh, heresy. And so let me continue reading on. So it said, um, however, it appeared that it described this psalm best fits what happened during the rebellion led by Absalom. Over many months, Absalom led a subversive campaign against his father, even Ephraim, David's wisest counselor, deserted the king and followed Absalom. Uh, they took counsel together against me. Reminds us of the conference recorded in 2 Samuel 17. If we take the phrase the sea city literally, it would, could refer to Jerusalem. After fleeing Jerusalem, David had made Manningham his headquarters, but it was never under siege. Uh, perhaps the phrase should be taken metaphorically. God showed me marvelous kindness as if I were in a besieged city. If so, then it would parallel verse 20 which picture God hiding his faithful one in the holy of holies which surely isn't to be taken literally. Out of this harrowing experience David learned some valuable lessons and recorded them in this psalm. They can be summarized in three statements. So that's how this psalm is broken down brothers and sisters in three statements. When others do evil trust God for his strength. This is summarized in verses 1 through 8. The first verse, the first three verses are quoted from 71, Psalm 71, 1 through 3, an untitled psalm probably written by David. He affirms his trust in the Lord and asks him to deliver him and defend him on the basis of divine righteousness. Shall not the judge of all earth do right? How can the righteous Lord permit wicked people to prosper and overthrow his anointed king was the question. Such a thing would make David ashamed, a statement he repeats in verse 17. He often did, as he often did, he begged God to act speedily and be to him a rock and a fortress. A rock and a fortress. He is my rock, uh, my stable place. Along with God's protection, David need, needed God's direction so he would avoid the traps the enemy had set for him. You are my strength was his affirmation of faith for his own strength had failed. Uh, his prayer of commitment in verse five was quoted by our Lord from the cross. 
Peter also borrowed the idea, 1 Peter 4.19, and used the word commit, which means to deposit and trust as money in the bank. And so, in other words, and when we look at uh, verse number five real quick, uh, uh, let's go back to verses one and two. Uh, when he said, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust, uh, for thou hast lifted me up and has not, excuse me, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust, let me never be ashamed, deliver me in thy righteousness, bow down thine ear to me, deliver me speedily, be thou my strong rock, for a house of defense to save me, is the cry to be rescued. David initial cry to the Lord, his refuge, his only protection and safety was in the Lord. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. This type of trust pictures a bird, amen, taking refuge under his mother's wing. So that's how comfortable he had, the relationship he had. He was going to run to his the rock. Amen. Which was his mother when in verses uh, 6 and 14, he uses the term, my trust, my trust. And that's the connotation that we have when you say the Lord being your trust is as uh, uh, someone leaning on something, that you can lean on it, that it would not give way. And I thought about that uh, when you look at verses 6 and 14, when David says, I have hated them that them that regard lying lips, but I trust in the Lord. And then in verse 14 in our Bible, he says here, but I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. So when he said, I, you are my trust, he depended on God. Can you depend on God? Can God depend on you? Um, uh, you have that type of trust that you can lean on something or someone and it won't give way. And so I, when I was reading that and studying that, I was thinking about, I used to hear Reverend Willie Tucker always used to say to me about his trust in the Lord. He would say, God is a leaning post that would never give way. He said, right now, thousands are leaning on him, uh, but his arm will never give way. And I was thinking about that even on last Tuesday as I was undergoing my procedure. And that's what came to mind that I didn't have, you don't have time to have a long prayer. Don't you know when you're in trouble, the mercy prayer? Would, is suitable. A mercy prayer, when you just say, Lord, have mercy, that prayer is real. That prayer is genuine. That prayer is short. That that prayer is direct. That prayer is sincere. If you don't have to pray these long prayers. When you put your trust in the Lord and you say, Lord, have mercy, that means whatever the outcome going to be, I'm dependent on you. It's all right because I'm trusting in you. Thank God for the doctors. You thank God for medication, but you say, Lord, I'm, I trust in you. And uh, as I know, I, you know, they give you the anesthesia. I don't know if I went two or three seconds after that. But the only thing my prayer was, Lord, I was thinking, uh, I, 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 let me lean on you. Uh, you I, I, I want to lean on you. Let me lean on you. I said, Reverend Tucker said, use a leaning post. And that's what my prayer and meditation are. Even as I go under, you know, people take anesthesia. It's not guaranteed that you're going to come out of it. Ask Joan Rivers. Amen. But uh, uh, let me lean on you. That was my last thought as I went under. Let me lean on you. Let me lean on you. So he said, I, I put you in my trust. Uh, and let me, let's go back to the lesson real quick. Let's look in the book. Um, let me get back to the book of our time. He said he used the word commit, commit. And I want to look at that word commit. What does that word commit? To deposit and trust as money in the bank. When you commit, that means you're going to commit. And who committed unto themselves unto the Lord? Well, Jesus, when he was on the cross, well, I'm not going to read the scripture. I'll just give it to you. Luke 23 and 46, he said, Father, into thy hand, what? I commit thy spirit. That means whatever's going to be. It's well. Look at Stephen, Acts 7, 59. When they were stoning him, he lifted up his eyes and he said, Father, into thy hand, I commit my spirit. That means I what's going to, whatever happens to me in the flesh is all right, but my soul, they can't touch. Uh, whatever happens in the afterlife, after we close our eyes, in my in my in, into thy hands, a secure hand. I commit my soul, my spirit. 
and we have enough faith, we have enough confidence that it's going to be well because we put it in a secure place in God's hands. Amen. To deposit it and trust as having money in the bank. The hand, uh, I'm going back to the book now. We're on page 118. The hand of the enemy was against David, but he knew he was safe in God's hand. The God of truth would keep his promises. His enemies were idolatrous. Idolatry. They weren't trusting in the living God, but in lying vanity, worthless idols. Note to repeat it, but I trust. The word means to depend on, to lean on. Jonah quoted verse 6 in his prayer from the great fish. In his mercy, God had delivered David from many dangerous places. God had delivered David from many dangerous places, and David knew he could depend on him again, and, and thus brought him joy. As in the past, God would deliver him from a tight place and would enable him to stand in a spacious place. He would grow because of his trials and his faith in the Lord. Uh, let me share this with you, brothers and sisters. When you get down and out and you're wondering, uh, uh, as you go through your trials and the tribulations, sometimes your only hope, your only bright spot as you're going through is looking back. And I, and I say this with all truth. Sometimes you're laying on the bed of affliction. Sometimes you, your money is funny, your change is strange. Sometimes you're troubled on every side. Sometimes you feel as though you're walking alone. And you don't think you're going to make it. But the only time, only thing that can encourage you, sometimes you have to pause and encourage yourself. How do you do that? Look back. Go back and see what God had already done in your life. Huh? Go back and start counting your blessings and think of some other situations where you was in a tight place, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a jam situation. Whether you knew of the Lord or you didn't know him. What I mean when I say you didn't know him, that means you didn't know to acknowledge him, but you got out of it. Now, when you know the Lord and he was in a tight place, messed up predicament, the first thing you're going to do is say hallelujah, thank you Jesus. But there were so many situations in our lives when we could have been dead. We should have been dead. But we didn't have that divine relationship with God. So we didn't uh, have a mind of praise like we do now. Can I get a witness? But to encourage yourself as you're going through situations right now, just begin to look back and say, Lord, if you did it before, you're able to do it again. And this is some of the things that helped David as he was surrounded by his enemy. They were talking about him. They didn't want to be bothered with him. That's what the psalm is saying. They were scared. He was the king. Familiar people, familiar faces. But now they didn't want to bother him. They, they counted him out as dead. He was good as dead to them. Familiar faces, familiar people. And they were murmuring. They had rumors going. You know what a rumor is when they talk, the rumor is just an opinion. Somebody gets an opinion started, get a lie started on you, and it spread like wildfire. You don't know how to put an end to it. You don't know how to put it out. And you have to endure all this and still hold your head up. But if you have to have a, that type of, the only bright spot is some, think about some of the situations that when you were sick before and how God brought you through. That's how you can be able to endure. That's what the psalmist said, through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. Huh? It was grace that brought me safe this far, and grace will lead me home. Uh, let me just read number two, and then we'll move on. In our book on page 118, when others cause pain, ask God for his mercy. David had prayed, thou art my strength, but now he said, thou art my God, and he asked for the mercy he desperately needed. When you consider the vocabulary he used to describe his plight, you can, you can well understand his need for mercy. He was filled with grief. He was sighing. His physical strength was failing. His very bones were weakening. His soul and inner being were pain because of the troubles others was causing. That's one thing for you to cause your own trouble. Uh, but when other people cause you grief, you still have to bear it. Uh, 
And then what happened is, I love this part here. I had to highlight it in my book here. He must have examined his heart and discovered sin there, so he confessed it to the Lord. I often say David was just like you and I. had. To, he wasn't exempt from no problems, but he had a good line of communication with God. He knew how to get down on his knees and confess his sins and confess his faults. Even if God had to pull it out of him, even if God, even when God exposed him of his sin, you know, uh, we we ought not be so hard hearted and not too proud when you know you're wrong. Even if it's even if the lie, I won't say even if there's a rumor out on you and it's true. Own up to it. Own up to it with God. God knows how to make it right. Ain't nobody perfect. The Bible, Romans, still say three twenty. We, all for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Some of us, we, ex we, we, we exert so much energy trying to cover a lie, make the truth, a lie out of the truth of our lives that, you know, you make your own self look guilty. It's one thing to laugh and smile when you know it's not true, but when you try to try to cover up a lie with the truth, you know, the first person you better confess to is God. And then you need to get rid of that heavy load because a, a, a lie is like a burden. Amen. And then own up to it. And, amen. Who can throw a rock? Who can throw a really, when people fall short, who can really throw a rock at them? Huh? And we got a lot of judges. I know a whole plenty of them. They can count my faults. Amen. And they, they I guess they have a daily ledger waiting for the reverend to say something out of turn or do something out of turn. But if you want to be the, first one to cast a stone god bless you amen be careful how you point that finger because you got that big thumb pointing back at you only thing we can do and i i i don't think i can do even as a pastor is ask god to have mercy mercy for you amen i don't sit as nobody judge amen we all come short but i ask god to give you strength amen do, do what jesus said when he told the woman caught in the act of adultery uh, uh go and sin no more I know you may have fall down, but don't stay down. Can I get a witness? Women, where are thy accusers? There are none. They all walked away. Neither do I accuse. But we have a plenty of judges. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Along with his physical and emotional anguish was the way people were treating him. His enemies were spreading malicious lies about him, and people believed them. Of course, it's these lies spread rapidly, and David's close friends and neighbors heard and believed them. Even casual acquaintances avoided him when they saw him coming. For who wants to be seen speaking to an evil man? He became like a dead man who had been forgotten, like a, a useless piece of pottery that had been thrown away. It didn't take long for the strife of tongues to poison the nation and prepare the way for Absalom to take over. The phrase fell on every side. Is used six times by the prophet Jeremiah. In David's day, the destruction of the government and the exile of the king brought great fear to the people, and all sorts of rumors spread throughout the land. David answered to this confession, My times are in your hands. He had committed himself into God's hands, and now he committed his circumstances into God's hands. My times refer not to a special schedule, but to all the events and circumstances that surrounded David. We would say all the fears and details of my life are in the Lord's hand. This is the Old Testament version of Romans 8.28. David trusted God to bring light into the darkness and truth into the sea of lies that was overwhelming the people. Instead of the king being ashamed, his enemies would be ashamed when the Lord exposes the wicked, exposed their wickedness and defeated them. Uh, and so I'm going to give you a few verses of scripture and then we're going to be our way. Uh, Psalms 37, how to handle a situation when people do you harm. All right, Psalms 37, I want to read three verses of Psalms 37. Three verses of Psalms 37, verses one through three. The very familiar portion of scripture. Uh, how to handle adversity, especially around familiar faces. Psalms 37, verses one through three says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither uh, be thou envious against workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and weather as the green herd. 
it says here, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. That's our responsibility. Don't worry about evil doers. Trust in the Lord and do good. For they'll soon be cut down. You ever notice about people that stir up trouble? Uh, after a while, even in this psalm, I, I love this psalm. When you look down a little further in this psalm, read it in this psalm. He said, uh, uh, in this psalm, he said there that he saw uh, uh, the wicked in great power spreading himself like a green bay tree. But then he looked, amen, that's in verse 35. Uh, he said, I seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, and he could not be found. That's what happens when you let the Lord fight your battle. Amen. The wickedness people don't last always. Uh, we have to believe. Uh, 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 I want to give you another scripture here. Second Corinthians 7. Second Corinthians 7 and 5. Second Corinthians. Chapter 7 and verse 5. Sometimes the circumstances are so heavy. Look what the Apostle Paul said. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. That's how severe it can be. Look what it says here. For when we were come unto Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we were, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fighting, within were fear. Look what he said. He was troubled on every side. Fightings without, fears within. What are you going to do when it's like that? By trouble on every side. You're looking for peace. You're looking for rest. You can't find none. Can you imagine the amount of the grief and the stress that uh, you go through for following Christ? But you have to have this conviction that through it all, that's what the songwriter said, through it all, I've learned how to lean and depend on him. Uh, as I close out, I want to give you the words of these songs here. Uh, because what happens is the latter part of this psalm here, it ends in praise. When you look at uh, verses, uh, when you look at verses, I believe, 19 through 24, 19 through 24, it ends in praise. David was delivered. God turned it for his good. Uh, and as I often said, that uh, he encouraged others to love God. He en encouraged others to believe in God. Uh, he encouraged others to take refuge uh, and, and have faith in God, that God will strengthen your heart. Remember I said this before, and I continue to say, all your troubles are not just for you. Of course, I'm the one and you're the one encountering it. You're enduring it. It causes, to, when we get through them, it develops us and makes us strong. But it also gives you boldness in your testimony that others can see. Hey, they went through it. That's why you get up and give testimony. Because when you give a testimony, you don't know who the next person is going through the same thing. The next person is going through spousal abuse. The next person is going through a broken home. A next, the next person is going through not having money. The next person is going through uh, 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 abandonment. The next person is going through loneliness, disappointment. But when you get up, when you've gone through, and when you, uh, the next person is going through church issues and church problems, but when you get up, and tell what the Lord have done, that strengthens the body, that strengthens the church. And then make someone else say, if God did it for them, if I apply the same faith, if I have the faith the size of a mustard seed, I can say to that mountain, be thou moved. And so listen to the words of the psalm as we look at this psalm as here. He said, I, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Uh, I, it came to mind as I was looking at it, and I said, he said, I go to the rock. Amen. You, I go to the rock. Look at the words of the song, I go to the rock. I know Whitney Houston saying, it says, where do I go when there's no one else to turn to? Who do I talk to when no one wants to listen? 
who do I lean on when there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock. I know he's able. I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Do you have that type of relationship? Can you run to Jesus? Uh, on Christ that solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And then I, I like to pull another one out of the hat. Amen. This is an old song. Amen. For the old season saints. Uh, they know this song. It says, where shall I go? Where shall I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where shall I go? Where can I go? Where shall I go? But to the Lord. Amen. When you have that type of rapport relationship, you can run to him. We're going to encounter the storms of life, but we have that assurance. Amen. We're not exempt. I keep telling you over and over. It hurts. Somebody said, ain't no hurt like church hurt. Amen. People talking about you. It goes with the territory. Brothers and sisters, I would have been gone a long time ago if I was in my feelings. Amen. Check your feelings at the door when you're going to be a Christian. That's all I can tell you. I know I, I, I try to encourage a whole lot of people, but there's just some things you just have to go through. And when you go through it, you say, thank you, Pastor. You pray for my strength. Amen. Strengthen me, Lord. Amen. We thank God. I have a question for you. I had a question and I wrote it down. Let me see. Here's the question. Have you ever been in a situation when people close to you turned on you? And how did you handle it? Amen. Have you ever been in a situation, whether it's on the job, in your family, in your neighborhood, with familiar faces now? when they turned on you. And I'm not asking you in your BC days how you handle it. You don't have to tell me how you handle it in your BC days. Somebody said, what you mean BC? Before Christ, before you was born again. That's your BC days. You don't have to tell me because I know we all know some for fantasies and we even had to lay hands on people. Ain't that right? But nevertheless, in your newness of life, in your new walk with Christ, when you, how did you ever have you ever been in a situation where people close to you turned on you, tried to, you know, even, I mean, my, they might have said something against you. They not didn't have to put hands on you, but they spoke against you, tried to do you harm. How did you handle it? How did you handle it now that you at least have an idea you know better? How did you handle it? Or if you're going through now, how do you think you should handle it? That's the question for the evening. Feel, feel free to hit star six. Amen. Our line is open. Feel free to hit star six. Have you ever gone through something with folk turned on you? How did you handle the situation as a believer in Christ? Pastor, when yes. you go through when you go through things like that, what I learned to do is talk to the Lord, talk to the Holy Spirit in my own little private corner and cry and pray for the one that 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 that, that came up against me mm -mm, and ask the lord to do strengthen me for all they have done and still turn around and hug them and smile with them that's how i learn and how to handle it now thank you lord thank, thank you, you. Mm. now now look what you Robinson, because the Bible said, if they're hungry, will you still feed them? If they're thirst, will you still give them drink? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That's, oh, that's, God, oh, God, oh, that's, God. That's, mm. uh, we know in our flesh, if we kill my dog, I'm going to kill your cat. But mm. in Christ, if someone needs something, that's what he's saying. Love them anyhow, in spite yes, of them. Yes, that's Lord. Is there another? Yes, Is that's it? right. I learned to um, think about Jesus Christ. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? Because we all got the bad at cross. Because yeah. they talked about him and criticized him. So who is us, you know? So I learned that from a person that did something to me. You know? Come on. 
I didn't get upset with them because we have to bear a cross too, you know? Thank you. Thank you. You're talking right. Is there another? Yeah, Brother Pastor. You can also ask the Lord for a backup plan. Oh, brother <laughs> backup plan, Brother Harvey. Yeah, to get out of things. Because some certain stuff you can see coming. Like if you know that your closest friend may turn against you, your backup plan from the Lord is how to get out of it, what to mm. say and what to do, how to keep your, what's the word, how to tame your tongue. A lot of people do got short temper. Good word. Very you know, good word. enough to get you out of the situation so you won't yeah. flip. Uh-huh. That's the backup plan. And, that, that, and ask the Lord ahead of time, Lord, if you can see what I'm going through, help me to get out of it. So if you don't yeah. help me get out of it, something may happen that I may regret. Hello? Yeah, how do I get on? Just hit Hello? Start. Go on, Sister Joni. Oh, I'm on. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? Something happened to me a couple of weeks ago with someone close to me, and they turned on me. Okay. At first, I was a little upset, but I had to look at the spirit in that person because I knew who they were. But how they turned on me for a minute or whatever, I started, we got to look at the spirit in that person and then look at ourselves. And you got to forgive them no matter what. You got to forgive them. Um, and those things will happen. Those things will happen. People will say things and do things that we don't like. I'm sorry, the Bible said forgive because we all fall short. So we say we fall short. So we have to understand when other people do the same thing to us, we need to forgive. Yes. We need to forgive. And it's hard, but we have to do it. But that costs, that makes growth, that makes us better. Thank yes. You. And the release from the situation. You know, they say forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for <laughs> us. Amen. <laughs> so you can continue to live happy. <laughs> is Amen. there another? Before? Good evening, oh. everyone. My oh. thought is that when someone does me a disservice, I'm just going to put the word on them and let God handle it. This is just a pencil. Yeah, I know you. Thank you. And you can't go wrong with the word of God, uh, whether uh, you put it in the atmosphere. Yeah. And it cuts like a sword. It, it, it will do what it, it will do what it's supposed to do, the word of God. And then David said in this psalm, he wanted the, 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 the blessing of the Lord to shine upon him, shine upon him. That's what God will do. He'll give you a favor. He'll give you anointing. And that's what it's called the uh, Aaronic. Aaronic, Aaronic, Aaronic benediction. Let me say that again. The Aaronic benediction. And what is the Aaronic benediction? It's found in number six and verses 22 to 27. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel. And this is the form of a benediction. The Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee to give thee peace. They shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Don't you know uh, God will put a, a polish on you, a, a sheen on you, a blessed life. Amen. When you, when you let go and let God Whenever you pray, let him have his way. Uh, and David, tell you, we can identify with him tonight. God bless you tonight. I uh, hope something was said in this song here uh, that uh, we don't know what really exactly what the problem was in David's life, but he was still going through. But he knew how to run to the Lord. He asked, cry for mercy. Amen. When, and when the Lord, so a lot of times as I close out, God don't move when you think he's going to move. But he will move. That's where our faith and our trust and our hope comes in. And continue to log it. Every, bla every blessing that God does, everything that God does for you, every deliverance, every way that he makes for you, 
continue to log it in your memory. Thank you. Because when you face another one, Lord, you did it before. You'll be able to do it. Is Minister Graham on the line tonight? Minister Graham, are you on the line? If so, or Evangelist Cooper, yes. come on in. Okay, give us a closing prayer. Minister Graham. All right. Praise be to Thank God. You. Amen. We thank God for again another lesson that has really helped. I know personally it helped me because I certainly could identify with some of David's trials and tribulations, amen, that uh, that he went through. And I realized that this song is talking about how to take refuge truly in the Lord and really count on him, man, to fight our battles. And, and I see this song's a little bit different. Thanks be to God that he is telling me tonight, thank you, to hold my peace and let the lies and let the scandalizing of names and things that are not, not maybe true, but God says to stand still because he'll fight your battle. And, and, and the truth will prevail, amen? And when the storms and, and the troubles come, that's what you said tonight, you don't, uh, you know, you can confide in the Lord, amen? <coughs> And, and, and you know what, uh, uh, I really like this psalm, fret not yourself for evil doers. Come on now. They shall be cut down, trust in the Lord, and do good. Amen. Help me to do good, God, in spite of. Father God, we call upon your holy and righteous name once again today, God, just to say thank you, Father. We thank you for another day. We thank you for another or oh, 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 opportunity to have a prayer service collectively with your people at the Greater Central Baptist Church. We thank you, oh God, for this Bible study tonight, for using your servant, the Reverend Hawkins, amen, to bring forth clarity about your biblical uh, text, Psalms 31. Oh God, we thank you for his disciples on tonight. We thank you, oh God, for his clergy and his offices, oh God, and, and all, amen, his armor bearers tonight. We thank you for the mothers and the, and the children on tonight of the Great Central. We thank you for everyone that have joined in on the line, oh God, to receive what you have for us tonight. For we believe the blessing is on this line tonight, oh God. Oh God, we heard for the cries, uh, even in the press service of those that are in the hospital tonight, uh, those that are going through despair and isolation and depression, oh God, uh, those that are on the branch of suicide tonight, oh God, uh, those, oh God, that know that they, that they got a bad test result, oh God, uh, and they don't know where to turn, God. We thank you, Jesus, uh, that we learn that we have to wait on you and stand still because you're the answer to every prayer tonight god you're the answer to every situation tonight god we heard oh god about your 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 servant and your and your brother mr tony or uh, uh, brother tony phillips tonight oh god that you we put him in your hand oh god as he undergo a surgical procedure, oh God, uh, please be the surgeon uh, in the operating room, God. Uh, oh God, be the anesthesiologist uh, and the nurses and everybody that's circulating uh, around your servant on that operating room table. Oh God, bring him back, oh God. Uh, oh God, the neck, the oh God, the spine that you'll be able to use him for a greater purpose. Uh, you get the glory tonight, God. Uh, all of our saints in the nursing home, oh God, in the hospitals tonight, those that are going through bereavement, oh God, tonight, you know all about them, Jesus. There's no other God that can comfort us. You are the comforter, you're the healer, and you're the deliverer, oh God. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for every opportunity that I get, oh God, to worship you in prayer, to praise you in your greatness, oh God. I thank you, Father. I thank you for, for our pastor, oh God. I thank you, oh God. Continue to use him, coming with your precious blood. Oh God, we love you tonight. Oh God, we adore you tonight, oh God. All those that have shared on tonight, that have participated, oh God. 
that we can learn from the everyone's experience oh god that you can you don't have no particular person you don't favor one over the other that your god that is a father of us all and you love us just the same thank you father we thank you jesus hey god and all these blessings my father we ask in the name of the father and the son and the holy ghost it is in your name that we pray and let every believer say amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, uh, Father. Bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As we have now come to the close of our prayer and Bible study, we thank God for you. Amen. Lord, lift us up that we may stand by faith on heaven's table land, no higher plane that we have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Let the words of my mouth and meditation, my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And let the people of God say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. 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 I'm back. I'm back. I'm down. I'm back. 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 Amen, brother Pastor. Amen. Hey, Johnny. Hey, everybody. I'm back, y'all. Amen, Minister Graham. Amen. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Graham. I'm back, yeah, Mr. Graham. God is good. Hey, thank yes. you. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God, to tune and bless all of you. God bless you, Pastor. Enjoy you, it tonight. Yes. God bless you, Minister Graham. Thank you, G. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. God bless you. Keep yes. on praying. Yes. Thank you. Evangelist oh, Cooper, God you. bless you, darling. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Be safe tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.